know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. This talk presents Brushy Bill Roberts' failed impersonation of Billy the Kid in his gubernatorial pardon hearing. The information is from my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Imposter Hoax, of Brushy Bill Roberts. The original Brushy Bill Roberts' Billy the Kid Imposter Hoax was simpler than it became after Brushy's death as conceived by William V. Morrison, a salesman posing as a lawyer, and aided by C. L. Sonishin, an English teacher posing as an historian, coached 71-year-old Brushy, posing as 91-year-old Billy the Kid, would just get the gubernatorial pardon originally promised in 1879 to Billy Bonney by Governor Lou Wallace. It didn't turn out that way. Amazingly, however, this hoaxing trio got New Mexico's governor, Thomas Jewett Mabry, to grant Brushy a November 30th, 1950 pardon interview. Morrison accompanied him bearing a so-called evidence packet of historical misinformation, copies of Billy the Kid documents, and two affidavits by non-historical people claiming Brushy was Billy. Governor Mabry was their make or break. An attorney at the tail end of his 1947 to 1951 term, he was born in Kentucky and 66. A New Mexico Supreme Court Chief Justice from 1939 to 1946, he was a legal expert. He'd also been a state senator, an Albuquerque city commissioner, and an Albuquerque district attorney. Most importantly, he respected New Mexico's Old West history. So he gathered Billy the Kid experts to assist his evaluation. By that pardon hearing, Oliver Pleasant, Brushy Bill Roberts, had endured almost a year and a half of Morrison's relentless coaching by books, documents, visits to historical sites, and rehearsal tape recordings, and Morrison tried to pump him up four months before the hearing, calling him Billy for the hoax. Morrison wrote to him on August 3rd, 1950. My dear friend Billy, the consensus of opinion in this entire country is swinging in our favor. The historians of note are beginning to pull in their ears and will have nothing to offer by the time we are ready to finish out our case. I am sending clipping, which you can keep. Mr. Hooten of the El Paso Times told me that definitely Garrett killed Billy, but he has turned tail now. I have the affidavit that you're Billy the Kid of the old lady. This was a non-historical Martiel Abel that we talked to in El Paso. Morrison sent a copy of this letter to colluding Sonishin. In C.L. Sonishin's collected papers is a typed draft 
of the pardon petition, apparently written by Morrison. The signature line has an El Paso, Texas law firm, Andrus, Lipscomb, and Petticolis, as attorneys for applicant. Attorney Ted Andrus signed its November 15, 1950 final version to Governor Mabry on the firm's letterhead. It stated, Honorable Sir, application is herewith respectfully made for a full unconditional pardon for William Henry Roberts, alias William Henry Bonney, alias William H. Antrim, alias The Kid, alias Billy The Kid, alias A.L. Roberts, who was wrongfully convicted of murder in Doñana County, Territory of New Mexico, after a change of venue from Lincoln County in April 1881. After such wrongful conviction and in the desperation brought about by reason of the facts revealed in the enclosed verified statements, affidavits, letters, news articles, etc., Billy the Kid escaped from the Lincoln County Jail and has never thereafter been apprehended. There is a legend that this applicant was killed by Sheriff Pat F. Garrett in July 1881 at Fort Sumner, San Miguel County, New Mexico, but this legend has no competent evidence and support is wholly improper and untrue. As a matter of fact, applicant was not killed by anyone and lived in old Mexico for many years. As proved by the attached file of affidavits, statements, letters, etc., Territorial Governor Lou Wallace promised to pardon applicant for all offenses committed by him upon his promise to surrender to the Sheriff of Lincoln County, furnish statements to the governor on general conditions existing in Lincoln County to testify before the grand jury concerning the disturbance in Lincoln County and in connection with the murder of Houston, misspelled, J, it was actually I for Ingram, Chapman, an attorney on a public street in Lincoln and to plead to the indictment against him in Lincoln County District Court. Note that reporting on Lincoln County disturbance and standing trial for his indictment were not in Real Billy's pardon deal, but Coach Brushy parroted Morrison's errors in his tape recordings. The applicant carried out his agreement to the letter, but the promises made to him were never carried out. Even at this late date, it is highly proper and essential that the terms of the original agreement with Governor Lou Wallace, Territorial Governor of New Mexico, be carried out by the executive of the state of New Mexico and that the full pardon be granted in order that the few remaining days of applicant now past 90 years of age, Brushy was 71, may be spent in peace. We are sure that the great amount of work and effort reflected by the enclosed file is readily apparent. Considering the sentence that applicant is under, it has been impossible for him to live openly without fear. Morrison got the publicity rolling before the pardon hearing. He bet correctly on Lou Wallace's home state of Indiana. On November 25th, a Sexton Humphreys wrote for the Indianapolis News, Pardon me, I'm alive, says Billy the Kid. Excerpted, it stated, The death of Billy the Kid is nothing but a legend, says an attorney who asked New Mexico Governor Thomas J. Mabry for a pardon for him. The attorney, Ted Andrus, says William Henry Roberts, alias William Henry Bonney, William H. Antrim, the kid, Billy the Kid, and A.L. Roberts is still alive. 
The petition says he surrendered because the territorial governor, Crawfordsville's Lou Wallace, of Ben-Hur fame, promised him a pardon. But the pardon was never given, and Billy, under conviction for murdering a sheriff, broke for freedom. The legend is that he was killed in the escape attempt, but the petition says he was only wounded and got to Mexico, that it was a companion that was killed. The Indianapolis News used the Santa Fe United Press to rush out, pardon my six shooters, Billy the Kid, governor to decide, before a decision on the November 30th hearing day. It stated, a page out of the Old West comes to life today when a grizzled old man who claims to be the fabulous outlaw Billy the Kid matches wits with the governor of New Mexico. Governor Thomas Mabry will confer with several distinguished historians and Billy, in quotes, over his application for a pardon in connection with the 1878 murder of Sheriff William Brady. It has long been presumed that the legendary gunman was shot to death by Sheriff Pat Garrett, July 14, 1881. But periodically, since that date, Billies have come forth to claim ownership of the silver six guns that killed 21 frontiersmen. The latest claimant, unseen so far by newspapermen and New Mexico officials, has been both verified and denied by elderly Southwesterners who claim to be former companions of the kid. Mrs. Martiel Abel of El Paso, Texas, says he has the same keen blue eyes as Billy. Fevero, meaning Severo, Gallegos of Rio Doso, New Mexico, said he still is fast on the draw despite age. Both agreed in sworn affidavits that he possesses the same small hands and large wrists supposedly physical characteristics of the pint-sized outlaw. However, the aged cowpuncher Ben Cisneros said he couldn't possibly be Billy the Kid. Cisneros said he saw Billy in a casket in Fort Sumner after Sheriff Garrett shot him. Governor Mabry indicated that he wants to meet the new Billy and decide once and for all, if the notorious gunman is alive or in a grave near Fort Sumner, New Mexico, where hundreds of tourists have gazed on him for many years. Then came the actual Thursday, November 30th, 1950 meeting in Governor Thomas Jewett Mabry's Santa Fe Executive Mansion. With Mabry, as experts, were Pat Garrett's sons, Oscar and Jarvis Garrett, Sheriff Brady's grandson, Arcadio Brady, Kip McKinney's son, Cliff McKinney, Frank Coe's son, Wilbur Coe, and historians, Will Robinson and J.W. Hendren. It was an historic moment not because Brushy was Billy, but because it would be the only time that the real Brushy Bill would ever be seen in the raw, not fixed up or covered up in Morrison's and Sonishin's writings or by later hoax-promoting authors. The reason was that reporters and historian J.W. Hendren recorded his quotes. Brushy failed ludicrously. He forgot his lines and filled in with wild fantasies. Thus, for the death scene, being 20 years younger than Billy, so in the generation after the frontier, 
he pictured towns having restaurants and made up that beef had to be sought at the Maxwell House because Fort Sumner's restaurant ran out. He forgot Pat Garrett's name or any specifics of the Lincoln County War, called Billy he instead of I, used only his right hand while pretending Billy was left-handed, said his name was Ollie instead of Billy, and claimed that he'd killed no one though the pardon was for Billy's killings. He was such an obvious fake that Morrison's so-called evidence packet was ignored. Governor Mayberry rejected the pardon based on no Billy the Kid to pardon. Additionally, that same day, Brushy's fable of surviving Pat Garrett's shooting was shot down by the Alamogordo News' publishing Billy Bonney's coroner's jury report with sarcastic front page headline, Fort Sumner jury thought the kid had been killed. It confirmed that the report was found in 1932 in the Santa Fe Capitol building's basement. The press went to town painting Brushy and his flubs. From Governor Mabry's hometown of Clovis, New Mexico, came the November 30th Clovis News Journal's front page headline, Mabry Terms Billy Outright Imposter. It stated, Governor Thomas J. Mabry said Thursday he believes a 91-year-old man who claims to be Billy the Kid is an imposter. No action will be taken on his petition for a full pardon for Billy the Kid, because I don't believe this man is Billy the Kid, the governor said. The November 30th Santa Fe, New Mexican ran, Billy the Kid only a phony, it turns out. Cowboy dressed, Brushy's photo was captioned. He couldn't remember enough of the youthful outlaw's career to convince the governor and newsmen of his right to the title. That excerpted article stated, A pardon for Billy the Kid, the famous killer of New Mexico's Lincoln County War, today was refused by Governor Tom J. Mabry. The governor announced his decision after an hour's interview with Ollie or Henry Roberts at the executive mansion. Roberts allowed as to how he was the kid, who historians say Sheriff Pat Garrett shot to death on the night of July 14, 1881 at Fort Sumner. I don't think he is, Billy the Kid, the governor said. I'm taking no action now or ever on this petition for a pardon. In the presence of a group of newspaper reporters, Roberts told Mabry it was not he but a pal, Billy Barlow, whom Garrett killed on that night in Pete Maxwell's house at Fort Sumner. You couldn't tell us apart, said Roberts when Mabry asked pointed questions. The answer was frequently, 69 years is a long time to remember. The kid is reputed to have slain 21 men in the 21 years of his life. Roberts refused to admit to having killed anybody. Roberts said he didn't know who killed Sheriff William Brady at Lincoln, April 1st, 1878. Four men were shooting at one another at the same time, he said. If a man is shooting at you, don't you shoot back? He asked Mabry. It was for the Brady killing that the kid was sentenced to hang. Note that Brady was killed in an ambush by the concealed regulators. There was no shootout. His story that night of July 14, 1881 at Fort Sumner was substantially this. A restaurant was out of meat. He was asked to go to Pete Maxwell's house and get some. 
he suspected a trap and declined. However, Billy Barlow, who was half shot, volunteered to go. Roberts heard shooting and ran to Maxwell's yard. Men shot at him and he shot back. A bullet creased his skull, knocking him out. A Mexican woman dragged him into her house and revived him. Soon afterward, he lit out for the Mexican border. Note that there was no such shootout. Oscar Garrett, Odessa, Texas, and Jarvis Garrett here on a visit from South America, sons of Pat Garrett, sat in on the meeting. Asked if he had any questions to ask, Oscar said he wouldn't dignify the occasion by asking any. Roberts, replying to Maybury, said he had a good many girls. Garrett's wife's sister, Celsa Guterres, was one of his favorites, he said. Note that this was Morrison's coaching era, with Celsa not being Billy's sweetheart, but being married to Sabal Gutierrez. Did you ever steal any cattle, Maybury asked. Robert's answer was a loud no. Introduced to Cliff McKinney, Carlsbad, a mist-dimmed Robert's bright blue eyes. Roberts was informed McKinney was the son of T.C. Kip McKinney, who was with Garrett on that night of July 14, 1881, at Fort Sumner, saying McKinney, as well as Garrett, had earlier been a friend of his, Roberts choked up. God bless you, he said, clinging to McKinney's hand. Note that Garrett was not Billy's friend, and Kip McKinney didn't know Billy. When Mabry asked him if somebody were using him to promote something, not that I know of, he said. On the front page of the November 30th El Paso Herald Post, along with U.S. considers use of a bomb from Santa Fe was... Billy the Kid flunks in talk with Governor. It stated that Brushy claimed, quote, he escaped from the Lincoln County Jail at Lincoln earlier in 1881 with the help of some friends. He said he didn't do any shooting in the escape, but jumped on a horse and rode to a blacksmith shop three miles away to have the chain shackles removed. History and records reveal, however, that in that escape, Billy the Kid killed two guards. The excerpted article stated, Governor Thomas Mabry believes a 91-year-old man who claims to be Billy the Kid is an imposter. Governor Mabry said he intends to take no action on a request by an El Paso law firm to grant a full pardon to the man. In my opinion, the man is not Billy the Kid, the governor said. Governor Mabry, New Mexico historians, and relatives of men who had been historically associated with the Kid question the man in the governor's mansion today. The man gave his name as Ollie Roberts or Henry Roberts. Note that Brushy added Henry but forgot his fake name was supposed to be William Henry to match William Henry Bonney. Roberts told Governor Mabry that he was born in Buffalo Gap, Texas. Historians say that Billy the Kid was born in New York. Roberts said he left home at the age of 14 because his father was mean to him. He then went to New Mexico, he said. The fellow that was killed was named Billy Barlow, Robert said. I was with him. We looked like two peas in a pod. Billy Barlow drank a heap. I figured it was a trap at the Maxwell house. I stayed away. It was Barlow that went. History does not mention 
Billy Barlow as an associate of the kids. Governor Mabry asked Roberts where he was at the time of the shooting. I ran out in the yard, Roberts answered. Two men started shooting at me. One bullet cut me across the head. Roberts paused to show the governor a scar on the top of his head. I fell into a Mexican woman's yard, he continued. She doctored my wounds. Governor Mayberry and Roberts sat at the dining table with historians and relatives of men involved in the Fort Sumner shooting. Will Robinson, an Albuquerque historian, asked Robert several questions. Later, Robinson said, Roberts is not Billy the Kid. The December 1st Albuquerque Journal in Billy the Kid bubble burst, as Governor Mayberry rejects Ulster's claim, reported that Brushy couldn't answer basic questions. Pat Garrett's son, Oscar Garrett, was quoted, Roberts is either a deliberate imposter or the victim of a delusion. The excerpted article stated, The bubble burst today for the buckskin-clad, vain little man who claims he is 91 years old and is the one and only, the true Billy the Kid. Governor Thomas Jewett Mabry rejected both the man's claim to being Billy the Kid and his request for a full and complete pardon so I can die a free man. I'm taking no action now or ever on this application for a pardon for Billy the Kid because I do not believe this man is Billy the Kid, Governor Mabry said. Their request for the pardon was first presented to Governor Mabry last week by an El Paso law firm. It was William V. Morrison who brought Roberts to today's interview in the executive mansion. Their interview was arranged after Mabry said he would take no action at all on the pardon request until he had a personal interview with a man claiming to be Billy the Kid. The governor's disbelief was shared by more than a score of newsmen, state historians, and descendants of men who figured in Billy the Kid's saga who attended the interview. That disbelief was nourished on many things. Robert did not remember the name of Garrett, nor did he remember much about the famous Lincoln County Cattle War in which Billy the Kid earned much of his infamous reputation. At times, he referred to Billy the Kid as he, and at other times used the personal pronoun I. Robert said he was born in Buffalo Gap in Taylor County, Texas, but J.W. Hendren, Santa Fe historian and author of a book about Billy the Kid, says that Billy the Kid was born in New York City, November 23, 1859. Roberts used his right hand in handling his cane, in drinking water from a glass, in buttoning his jacket, and straightening his hat. Tradition has it that the kid was left-handed. Oscar Garrett of Odessa, Texas, son of the sheriff, who history says shot the kid to death, declined to question Roberts. Garrett also said that Roberts' claim is a slur on the character of my father. Note that Oscar Garrett focused on the hoax's implicit defamation of Pat Garrett as a murderer of an innocent victim. Roberts, resplendent in a yellow buckskin jacket and a bright green figured bandana, declared that the man killed by Pat Garrett was a man named Billy Barlow. Roberts said both he and Barlow worked for John Chisholm, 
during the Lincoln County Cattle War. Note that this was one of his prompt errors. Me and Billy Barlow, Roberts declared, was as much alike as two black-eyed peas. You couldn't tell us apart. The night he was supposed to have been killed, Roberts said Barlow wanted him to go to Pete Maxwell's home where history records Billy the Kid died in front of Garrett's blazing guns. But Barlow drank a heap and he was half shot at the time. He went right into the trap and was killed, not me. Robert said he ran to the Maxwell house after he heard shots there. A shot creased his skull and knocked him out. He said he was treated for that wound by a Mexican woman. While he was being treated, he said Barlow's body was being passed off as his. Morrison, meanwhile, said, We are satisfied that this man is not an imposter, but is the real Billy the Kid. Morrison and Roberts headed back to Albuquerque after the interview. Morrison would not comment on what he intends to do now in the affair. That November 30th, 1950, the reporters also exposed Morrison as an imposter and profiteer. The Clovis News Journal's Maybury terms Billy outright imposter stated, William V. Morrison is an El Paso salesman. He had previously claimed to be a St. Louis lawyer. The Santa Fe, New Mexicans, Billy the Kid only a phony, it turns out, nailed him for prompting. When Brushy was asked if he knew another sheriff besides Brady, the reporter recorded. What's his name? Brushy asked, turning to Morrison. Garrett, supplied Morrison. And it also reported Governor Mayberry's questioning Brushy as to whether somebody was using him to, quote, promote something. So it turned out that people were smarter than Morrison had reckoned, and Brushy was dumber than he had realized. Public debunking continued. December 1st, Albuquerque Journal ran, Will A. Kelleher, history student, sure, kid was shot. Kelleher later put a photocopy of Billy's coroner's jury report in his 1957 book titled Violence in Lincoln County, 1869 to 1881. Historian J.W. Hendren, present at the pardon meeting, published No Pardon for Billy in January 5, 1951's Highway Happenings, further detailing Brushy's fiasco. In C.L. Sonishin's collected papers, it was ignored by him. Excerpted, Hendren wrote, When I arrived, the old man who claimed to be the real Billy the Kid was resting. When the governor gave the word, he arose and walked awkwardly with his cane into the dining room of the executive mansion and took a seat at the table. Governor Maybury, himself well-versed in the pros and cons of Lincoln County history, proceeded to ply the old gentleman with some very pointed and detailed questions. At the onset of the interview, it was easy to see that this latest Billy the Kid had little conception of the facts about the Lincoln County War. He gave his name as Ollie or Henry Roberts. He said that he was born in Buffalo Gap, Taylor County, Texas. Historians generally agree that Billy the Kid was born in New York City. Roberts claimed that he had lived in Silver City, New Mexico as a boy and said that Mrs. Antrim was his aunt and not his mother. It is somewhat difficult to understand how a man, even in his 90s, could forget his own mother's name. He said he knew nothing of the people involved in the Lincoln County War. 
Roberts said he knew Sheriff William Brady, but did not know who shot him to death on April 1, 1878. Even so, Roberts had come to Santa Fe seeking pardon for the murder of Brady. It seems odd that a man would seek a pardon for a crime he did not commit. As to the killing of the two guards in Billy's Lincoln jailbreak, he claimed he was handcuffed, shackled, and chained to a post. Note that Billy was chained to the floor and that he had friends who helped him to escape. He admitted they were shooting at the time, but said he didn't know who did it. Ollie Roberts didn't even know where Chisholm's ranch was located and didn't know whether Tunstall was his friend or not. The real Billy spent much time in and around Fort Sumner, and Roberts claimed he knew Pete Maxwell and his sister, but could not remember her name, Paulita. He didn't even know where the town of Fort Sumner was located. Here is how he explains the way he escaped death at Fort Sumner on the night of July 14, 1881. He says he was asked to go to Pete Maxwell's house for some meat. He suspected he was being tricked into something and instead sent Billy Barlow, who was drunk. When Barlow entered Maxwell's bedroom, he was shot by Garrett. Stop. Note that Brushy's claiming the bedroom shooting is spectacular. In Sonishin's and Morrison's 1955 Brushy backing book, Alias Billy the Kid, Sonishin quoted Brushy as stating that Billy Barlow was shot outside on the Maxwell House's back porch. In fact, in his taped interview, he'd parroted Sonishin's own erroneous research but he reverted to the conventional scene in the hearing. Hendren continued, Roberts ran out into the yard, was wounded, cared for by women, then escaped to the Mexican border. It is odd that this story of Roberts has never been told before. Everyone in Fort Sumner couldn't keep such a secret this long. This pardon failure didn't end the Brushy Bill hoax. On December 18, 1950, not anticipating that Brushy would die suddenly in nine days, Morrison was still trying to salvage his Billy the Kid act. He wrote to Brushy, Dear Billy, the made-up name, this afternoon Dr. Sonishin's secretary called me and asked if you remember Clay Allison. Did you know him? I think you talked about him when we were on a trip in New Mexico. What do you remember about him, if anything? In reality, Clay Allison was part of the Colfax County War history and had no connection to Billy Bonney. If Brushy had lived to confabulate around this prompt, it would have been yet another coaching blooper. But that hearing was the last time anyone was allowed to see incompetent Brushy Bill in action. Morrison and Sonishin had learned their lesson. Their dilemma was solved by his sudden death on December 27, 1950. But that made Brushy's pardon hearings flubs, hoax-busting treasure letting real Brushy be the future measure of his hoaxing promoter's secret fix-ups to make a better Brushy. Huckster, William V. Morrison, spun Brushy's pardon hearing failure as injustice and conspiracy. In an April 12, 1954 letter to historian Philip J. Rash, with stilted legalese of his lawyer in posture, he recycled his fakery of no coroner's jury report and added a conspiracy theory blaming the Santa Fe ring. He wrote, 
I don't believe there was any secret why the Garrett faction opposed a legal hearing. They were put on notice that there was no legal record or evidence to support the contention that Garrett's posse had killed anyone on that memorable July 14, 1881. I was advised that it would be impossible to prove up the lost instrument, meaning coroner's jury report, at this late date. Therefore, the petition for pardon was the only manner in which to make a declaration. The Santa Fe Ring had failed to make a legal record of the purported killing at the time. However, they did almost everything else in an attempt to collect the $500 reward for Pat Garrett. Seven days later, on April 19th, Morrison wrote again to Rash, fixating on Brushy's little hands and big wrists as if proof of his Billy the Kid identity, unaware that it was Lou Wallace's outlaw myth creation for shackle slipping. Excerpted, Morrison wrote, During our little show or performance, with the Garrett faction doing most of the performing, Billy, meaning Brushy, stood through the intimidation waving those unusually small hands with the large wrists and no one seemed interested in his peculiar physical makeup except the governor. Then when it was realized at the hearing that we were prepared to submit the evidence to a tribunal, apparently they did not want to join issues. We were prepared with evidence they had never anticipated and they did not have a leg to stand on. Note that Morrison refers to his fake evidence packet, which was ignored because Brushy was obviously not Billy. By Morrison's March 7, 1955 letter to a Susie Peters, the Maybury hearing was hidden along with Brushy's disastrous showing. Morrison pretended the only problem had been Brushy's dying before getting justice. He wrote, the governor refused to grant a hearing on the petition. Note this brazen lie, since it was the governor's hearing on the pardon petition, which Brushy failed. Morrison concluded, and Roberts died on December 27, 1950, before we had an opportunity to present it to the newly elected governor, Edwin L. Meacham. The next talk will present Morrison's ignored evidence packet, which he brought to the pardon hearing and later hid, while pretending it had been able to clinch Brushy Bill as Billy the Kid.